All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today, I'll be doing my tips video that I have been doing every week, pretty much all season. Uh, but today, I'm going to do it a little bit of a different format. I'm going to do it more as a casual sort of recording of just me talking as opposed to my highly edited one that's pretty scripted. Um, but to be honest, I, I got kind of got sick of you doing that kind of video because all the preparation, all the editing. Yeah, I just I think they were a bit hard to watch anyway. So I'm going to try a different format today for the last round of the season. So, Let me know what you think in the comments if you think it's better or worse. But today I'm just going to be casually looking at my notes and just talking to you about each game. So to start off, uh, Collingwood and Essendon play at the MCG. So last week, Collingwood absolutely, absolutely smashed Adelaide in Adelaide, which is a tip I got wrong. I expected Adelaide to really respond thinking you know, this season's on the line, but uh, Collingwood just absolutely butchered them. And I'm starting to think Collingwood are back. And uh, make no mistake, I believe they're a strong chance to win the flag, even from fifth. Um, I've made that point before. Like, if they're on the right side of the finals fixture, um, from fifth, I think they could do some damage because they could play, like, an away final against, like, Geelong or Richmond or something. To contrast it with Essendon, they were pretty unconvincing, despite the fact that they got the win over in Perth. They played against Fremantle, and if you look at the stats, Fremantle kind of flogged them in all the critical areas, like contested possessions, clearances. Um, I think even inside 50s from memory. They were just too classy for Fremantle, which I think was the difference in the end. But they, nonetheless, they've locked themselves into a final spot. But I think they're playing Collingwood at a bad time. Is there much incentive to Essendon to win this? That's a good question because if they win this game, they'll bump up to seven and face a potential away trip to the Giants if they win their last game. So um, a win could mean a trip to Sydney, whereas a loss, they're still going to finish eighth and probably play Collingwood in the last round, or sorry, the first week of the finals. So um, they could actually gain more from losing this game, which is ridiculous. But I'm going to tip Collingwood to win this game. I think they're going to win by about 44 points because I think that's the form lines, what the form lines are suggesting. And I think these two are going to rematch next week in the, or the following week in the finals. So moving on to the second game of the, sea, of, the, of the round, Sydney is playing St. Kilda at the SEG. Last week, we saw the Swans were way too good for Melbourne on Friday night. In fact, that game kind of petered out. Um, it didn't look like Sydney were a bottom four team. It looked like Melbourne were a bottom four team. But uh, the Swans have been up and down this season. And uh, to contrast, the Saints got done by a Carlton side that's probably on their level now. I think we can all agree. Um, well, the Carlton knocked him off as well. Um, but it was a pretty good game. For the Swans, Oli Florent has really caught my eye. He's uh, He started the season well, and his last few games, he's probably going to feature in some brown low votes. So I feel like he's one player that could be really ready to take the next step next season. Interestingly, the Saints haven't won a game at the SCG since 2009, but that was the last time Sydney missed finals. So they've played a lot of good Sydney teams over that stretch. So they're not without their chances. As a result of this game, both of these sides are unlikely to fall down the ladder. So there's no reason to rest players or have a cheeky tank and uh, try and get a better draft pick. There's pretty much no incentive either way. So I'd imagine other than resting players who are actually injured, I can't see either side not um, you know, playing to their full capacity this week. So with that in mind, um, well, they, or they might play the kids, uh, give them an opportunity in the last game of the season. But all things being equal, I think City's going to win this game with the form they're in. They're going to win by 25 points. Next up is North Melbourne versus Melbourne down at Blundstone Arena in Hobart. Last week, we saw North absolutely obliterate Port Adelaide. That game was an absolute shambles, but we'll talk about Port Adelaide later. Brown had 10 goals. Goldstein probably had one of the best games of his career. He had like 34 possessions, a goal, and what, 28 hitouts? Um, but their mids were, their big mids were too, too good for Port. Uh, they bullied them at the contest, and Port really didn't show up. Apparently, they had the second most ever disposals in a game, North Melbourne, with 514. They had 200 plus on Port Adelaide, and they won the contested ball by 50. So, um, just shows the difference in level at that game, which is insane. I tip Port Adelaide, and I think a lot of people did. As we touched on before, Melbourne were belted by the Swans. I watched it alongside Backyard Charizard on his stream, and uh, he looked a little bit listless, uh, a little bit dejected. It was that sort of game. Um, the improvement hasn't come in the second half of the year, which I've been, I thought was going to. Uh, and I can't see anything changing this week. Hobart is a hard test. North Melbourne are very hard to beat down there. So I think North's going to belt them by 50 points. Next up, we have Geelong and Carlton down at GMHBA Stadium. Now, this is a better game than we perhaps thought it would be maybe two months ago. But we saw the Cats lost a classic last week against the Lions. They could have easily won, but they were undone by absolute brilliance. That Lincoln McCarthy mark, Charlie Cameron's individual uh, performance as well really stood up, despite what Chris Scott says about him not impacting the game. That was a bit of a head-scratcher. 
But Danger was unbelievable, and he might have even got three votes last week. He had like 37 possessions and a goal. Uh, the Gabba is a tough trip for the Cats, and I think they still played well. So I can't imagine they're not going to show up to this game, especially with a top two spot on the line if they lose. It's so hard to beat down in Geelong. The Blues did have trouble putting away the Saints. Um, and like I said, it was a good game, and they definitely improved, but GMHBA is a tough ask for any club. Uh, I don't think Carlton have improved so much that they're going to knock off Geelong when Geelong is playing for a, well, practically their season right now. It's that time of the year for Geelong. So I think the Cats will be angry. I think they'll be primed for finals, and they're going to win by 31 points. Next up is probably a game you'd think would be straightforward. It's Gold Coast versus GWS, the two expansion clubs going head-to-head at Metricon Stadium. The Hawks blasted the Suns last week, and although, to be fair, they did blast GWS a couple of weeks before that as well. The Suns remind me this year of that old cat that, like, is decrepit and, like, needs to die, but is just hanging on to their life. That's how Gold Coast are clinging to their season right and, now. You know, in the same vein, not so much the Giants, um are clinging to life, but they've gone to shit so badly right at the wrong time of the season. It'd be okay if it was just a slump, but they've gone really, really bad, getting belted by the Bulldogs, got belted by Hawthorne. They need to regain some finals form, and this game is an opportunity for them. So, they also need a win to hold onto that home final. So, assuming GWS win, um, which I do think they will, I think they'll win by 38 points, they'll retain a home final. So, yeah. Giants by 38 points. Next up, a game very close to my heart, is West Coast and Hawthorne at Optus Stadium. Now, this game is not a straightforward tip at all. Hawthorne, in particular, are a plucky side against West Coast. Can't imagine West Coast ever flogging them. Um, They're also full of confidence, so they've obviously smashed Gold Coast uh, in Ruffy's farewell game where he bagged six. Before that, they flogged GWS in Canberra in the snow. Um, You know, they've got a head full of steam at the moment. Hawks also need to win to play finals, so while that is mathematically possible, they're going to have their heads in the game, you'd think. Uh, But also the Eagles need to win to hold on to a top four spot, so they also have a lot to play for. The Eagles are coming off a six-day break, had a a grueling game in the wet last week in Melbourne. Hawthorne are also suited to the mention of the ground. Now, I know I'm making a lot of arguments for Hawthorne winning. I still think the Eagles will win. I just think they'll push the Eagles. And uh, the Eagles will have to be on their game to win this game. And I think the Eagles are going to win only by 12 points. So, I'm expecting a pretty good game over in Perth. We're now moving into the final day of the season. And this is a game I was really excited for, you know, in the last couple of weeks. But now I'm starting to think it's less... um, dramatic as I thought it was going to be. The Bulldogs are playing Adelaide at Mars in Ballarat. So, you know, like I said, like I, I thought this game was going to be like deciding the eight, but now the Bulldogs have kind of, I'm expecting them to ragdoll out. Uh, the Dogs' last two wins were 10 goals and 100 points over Essendon and GWS, who are both finalists. And I expect if they win this game, they'll actually leapfrog Essendon, but um, we'll get to that in a moment. So Dunkley, McRae and Bont are probably the prime midfield trio at the moment in the game. It's ridiculous how far Dunkley has come in the last two years. Can they win from seventh? I think they can. That's how good a football they're playing right now, and that's how confident I am they're going to win this game. To contrast, the Crows look listless. They, they lost the Collingwood was terrible. You know, coming up, I know they're a good side, Collingwood, but... To host yeah, their final home game of the year last week. Had the chance to consolidate a final spot. Now I think they've pretty much, they're cooked. They're not going to make it. Uh, but And their form in general has been poor. So it's been talk of them going for youth in the offseason, trying to load up on extra draft picks. Makes you think the end is nigh and they know it internally. The Dogs also play Ballarat well. And I think they're going to beat the Adelaide Crows by 45 points on Sunday. Richmond then hosts Brisbane at the MCG, and this is the other classic game um, to end the season that we're all looking forward to because it will decide the composition of the top four. You'd like to think Brisbane is pretty safe. Nonetheless, they need a win to stay in the top four ahead of Collingwood. So last week they had their premiership favoritism reaffirmed. They were too good for the Eagles in the wet. The Eagles touched them up in the first quarter. I was very confident after that first quarter. The Uh, Eagles were playing premiership football, but Richmond... Yes, the rain was a factor, but also I think they just lifted their intensity all over the ground. Yeah. They won the contested ball easily. When the ball hit the ground, they just swarmed. They played their game style perfectly. Uh, and the Eagles had no response, and I think the Eagles were lucky to stay within six points. But it was a good game nonetheless. The Lions were huge last week. They've passed every test that's been thrown at them, to be fair to them. Charlie Cameron has become the prime small forward in the game. Like I said, it's a bit ridiculous how Chris Scott said he didn't really impact the game. When you kick five goals and have 17 possessions, you definitely impact the game. And I think he had like two... two Game, uh, two goals right at the end as well. McCarthy's mark was one of the marks of the year. That was unbelievable. As you saw on Instagram, I, I got a big reaction out of me. Jared Lyons is lifted to be one of their best on balls, which is ridiculous. So they've only played one game at the G so far this year. That's the big test for Richmond. Uh, sorry, for Brisbane. And that's why I don't really think they're going to win this game. 
Um, so I've been skeptical on them, but until this uh, up until this weekend, but uh, beating the Cats is fairly compelling, nonetheless. Coming up against probably the best MCG side in the competition. And they only game this year, they got belted by SNN. So I'm going to tip Richmond to win by 35 points. And I can hear the tears of Brisbane fans in the comments already. Port Adelaide Fremantle is our last game of the season. And fingers crossed, we're hoping to live stream this game. It'll be about half time in the Richmond Brisbane game. I'm going to try and get that out of one screen for us. And Port Adelaide Free on the other screen. Bush wants to watch Freo, as you can imagine, being a Fremantle fan. But hopefully, we have an exciting finish to the season. It could come down to a percentage. Port were absolutely terrible last week. And um, if you want to see a good summary of it, go visit the PS channel. He does a really good rant on it. Hinkley could be gone. I think he said today that if he doesn't make finals, he's gone. And to be honest, I think even if they win, they're not going to make finals now. So they could be on the lookout for a new coach. Hello, Ross Lyon. I feel bad for their fans because, you know, last week's form is inexplicable. They've, they just belted S. I know S and N kind of went to shit as well, but Under, poor underachieved for the talent they have. It's ridiculous. Uh, so they need to win this game, and Adelaide need to beat the Dogs, but not by as much as Port win this game. So, provided Adelaide upset the Dogs, Port just need to win, and um, and then they're a chance. But I, I don't see it happening. Fremantle, um, like I said before, did a lot right against S and N, but. Uh, they're, they're just not polished at all. Their delivery into the forward line was terrible, making really dumb mistakes. They're young. That's the thing. They're very top heavy. They've got a lot of young players, uh, particularly in the back half. It's not conducive to composure, especially in a game <coughs> where a lot's on the line. But they're probably going to have a new coach. And I say probably, I mean definitely, because Ross Lyon was sacked this morning. I'm not sure who the takeover coach is. I think Longmuir could end up the actual coach. But I think they're going to break the trend of a caretaker coach coming in and winning a game because I think Port's going to win this. And I'll tip them by a comfortable 34 points. But anyway, guys, to finish off the video, I normally go with uh, what the final ladder would be if I get all my tips right. But I'll just show you what the finals week one matchup will be if I get all my tips right. Geelong will be playing Richmond at the MCG. Brisbane will be hosting West Coast at the Gabba. The Giants host the Dogs in a rematch of last week in Sydney. And Collingwood play Essendon at the MCG, which I am very keen to see. So all of those games look like they could be really good games. Maybe not the elimination finals. I could see the Dogs and Collingwood smashing them. But uh, nonetheless, I'm pumped already. Uh, yeah. So I'll definitely be back to do some predictions videos in the week off before the finals and all kinds of other content. We want to review the 10 teams who missed the finals as well. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe. Like the video if you liked it. If you haven't seen yet, I have done, I should have uploaded by now, my 5K subscriber podcast on the Chessie Thomas YouTube channel. So link is in the description if you want to check that out. Check out the channel, subscribe to it and uh, all the rest. So also let me know what you think of the new format. I think this video is going to go for a fair amount of time, but I'm keen to hear what you think. I personally enjoy this format a lot more. So thanks guys. I'll see you all very soon somewhere on YouTube. Cheers.